So, confession, I'd never seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre from start to finish. It was time to change that. I was hesitant going into the first chainsaw at this late stage because it is so beloved by many in the horror community, and it's heralded as one of the top horror films of all time. And honestly, I'm not going to do a full review of it here because, really, who needs more words about it? But, that being said, here's a couple more. If you're like me and hadn't seen the original film either, go ahead and check it out. 40 plus years later, it's still a very watchable film with some iconic imagery. Is it going to knock you on your ass like it would have at any point before now? No, but it's still an entertaining and powerful horror film, and you'll see why it is as highly regarded as it is. And holy god, can Marilyn Burns scream. So yeah, check out the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre if you've never seen it, even if just for historical perspective. Now then, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which is a canon film's release, had always fascinated me for years and years. In all the ways that the original encapsulated the 1970s, both in front of and behind the camera with its limited budget and scope, Chainsaw 2 perfectly represents canon in the mid-80s and all the excesses that came with it. This is apparent right away as two of the worst examples of humans in the 1980s make the thankful mistake of messing with Texas, which results in a bizarre bridge car battle with Leatherface and family. What you got there? Dennis Hopper, yes, that's right, Dennis Hopper stars as a former Texas Ranger and uncle of two of the victims from the original film. That case has been dismissed over time for a complete lack of evidence, despite all the public carnage that occurs during that first movie's finale, but Hopper isn't giving up the hunt. The bridge battle was being overheard by a local DJ, played by Caroline Williams, as the duo of shitheads had called her radio station and then wouldn't hang up during the attack. She tries to help Hopper with his mission to find the chainsaw murderers, but that ends up being detrimental to her safety. <laughs> Hopper seems surprisingly eager in his mostly limited role, but there's a scene or two where he just looks like death. Participants on the documentary on the Blu-ray have nothing but kind words to say about Hopper, but I can't help to wonder what he was like during the production. Also, it's odd how much the camera blatantly shows his stunt double. Like, doesn't even try to hide that it's not him. For most of the film, I was thinking how perfect Williams was in her role. By the last act, though, things get weird. Like, ridiculously over-the-top weird. To be fair, no human could realistically convey the amount of madness this character is supposed to be experiencing. But it felt like she was being poked with a stick by someone just out of frame in order to scream at times. And speaking of odd, there's the weird chainsaw dance that Leatherface keeps doing. Like, it's also iconic, but it's odd. Leatherface is kind of cartoonish in this, which I know some fans take issue with. Also, the final act of Chainsaw 2 is mostly the final act from Chainsaw 1. I'm guessing that was done to save time since this film was literally being rewritten while it was being shot, but still, it's disappointing. And while I like where things ultimately end up, boy, is the final shot of this film dumb. But I'm recommending Chainsaw 2 as well. It's a much different film than the first, but it's entertaining in its own way. Watching both films back to back is a fun time capsule and an excellent way to spend a few hours. Bring 